Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. We started the month of April, so this means that Streamside Studios has some new stamp sets available for you as clear stamps. And this adorable stamp set with this amazing fairy is one of them from this month. So if you love Streamside Studio as I do, but you aren't a fan of digi stamps as I am, um, each month there are some of her designs that get released as clear stamps. So if you were longing for her designs in your craft room, now is the time. So this stamp set, along with two others, one bigger one, one smaller one, are released in April and many more will follow in the upcoming months. Um, but last month there was also a fairy and um, I truly enjoyed coloring it in, but I didn't film it. I... <laughs> have a lot of things to do and the daily job and such so I cannot film every card that I'm making lately just because it's a bit too busy um, but I am going to try to at least film one of the stamp sets that I'm using from Streamside Studios and make a video for you with them um, so that's what I'm doing this month this adorable stamp set with the fairy and I'm going to create a one layer card. So that's why you saw me stamping out the fairy sort of in place on an A2 sized panel. Um, that panel was cut out using the basic rectangles by Mama Elephant, um, just if you're curious. Uh, so that's an A2 size and I am going to already cut out this mask. Um, when you're creating a one layer card, you can do this in several ways. You can color everything in with your medium, like everything with Copic markers, with pencils, with watercolors, anything you want. Or you can do a combination, like I'm doing today. I am going to Copic color my fairy and then I will do some ink blending on the background using distress inks. So just for that I needed this mask. So that's what I did first and now I'm going to color in this adorable fairy. So this one I'm going to give a bit of a darker skin tone with the hairstyle I just thought that it was a fabulous idea although you don't need um, a darker skin tone to have curly hair uh, but this was a way that I could show different skin tones in each of the fairies that Sean is creating because it's important to vary in skin tones whenever we can I think um, I have some adorable nieces with the darker skin and I'm so jealous about their skin tone but I don't want to have all pale skin tones on my cards so this fairy is going to be the most gorgeous brown ever um, I recently tried this brown <laughs> and actually it was a card that I didn't film <laughs> so hmm, um, I was a bit sad afterwards because I really like the color combination so that's why I'm using it today as well to show you because there are so many ways to create different skin tones and I think that this one, <laughs> I love it. It's a really warm brown skin tone with a really dark end but also a wonderful highlight as well with the yellow reds. So that's what I'm doing. So the paper I'm using today is a Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper and this allows me to add lots of layers. I know some of you already know it uh, but I just want to repeat it for people who are new to my channel or are looking for some papers that don't have that um, that bleeding going on easily when you add several layers of Copic markers or any al other alcohol markers. Sorry there. Um, so I have been coloring on Nina for a very, very long time and I didn't mind uh, using Nina because I also love the way that Copics blend on there. Um, the only issue that I had with Nina was that uh, I experienced a lot of bleeding once I started with a third layer of a specific color combination um, and that's something that you don't want uh, not when you're putting all the effort in it and this paper is just one that helps me with that uh, so that's why I recommend it um, so also here on the face you can see me, I'm just adding layers. I need at least two, um, but if I need more, I can easily add them without bleeding. So I'm almost done with the skin tone and then I'm going to move on to the dress. Now, I don't know why, 
because browns really they match with every color but browns and greens or like with yellow I just adore it um, <laughs> so yes uh, or purple but I already used purple on the other fairy that I colored in last month um, if you want to see that card it's on my blog uh, but I didn't film it so I just decided to do another color combination today just so that you have a variety of color combinations if you're looking for some um, and I'm going with these greens today it's not a really bright green but I love this muted green uh, it's sort of a mossy green and I just adore it I also think it really let the fairy stand out um, as well as it's also possible to add lots of shadows and details onto this dress using these markers so onto my second layer. I am adding again my darkest first and I'm working my way towards the lightest and I keep going, going back and forth if needed. So that's what I'm doing. Also I'm trying to have my light source sort of in the upper left corner, yes. Um, well most of it uh, on the skin and then on the dress. Uh, later on with the hair and the wings it's a bit different um, just because um, yeah so that is the dress I'm going to later on add stickles onto the details so that's what I'm doing onto the hair so the hair it's always a bit of a difficulty uh, there are many ways to color in hair today I went for the fluffy one so I sort of try to follow the curves and the roundings of the curly hair. Um, <laughs> yes, I did that with all the markers that I used today for the hair. Um, I just thought that was handy. So I'm doing that. And as you can see, I don't mind if I leave some gaps in between. I don't at all. Um, that also gives you more of the texture um, if there isn't any white left it's also good um, but I am not bothered by maybe a few areas that will be white in the end so I'm just following the shape and sort of having that curly idea in the hair as well I'm not an expert but in the end I like how it turned out so I'm happy with it, but you can color hair many different ways, as I already said. Uh, just do what you feel comfortable with and of course what you like as end result. I just tried something here and <laughs> I don't mind the end result, so I'm sharing it with you. And then for the wings, I want to have like the shadow closer towards the body because, well, wings in my ID are a bit translucent. Um, and I really like this minty color, I use it often, I know. Uh, but for rings as well, it's just a perfect color, I think. So, using the G's. And I'm just flicking my way towards the end. And then with the lightest one, I'm flicking my way towards the body of the fairy. And once that's done, this image is completely colored in. But first I have to add that second layer, so I'm just doing that really quickly here. And then I can start on the background. So that's also why I made that mask in the beginning, I can just move along. I'm adding that mask on top of the fairy and then I will take my stencil that I'm using today, the rectangle trio stencil. <laughs> Sorry, uh, this stencil is one of my favorite things. It's one of those basics that are really handy to have in your craft room. Uh, and I'm just placing it on top of it and then I'm securing it using some purple tape. And then I can take my distress inks and start ink blending. For today, I decided on using distress inks that kind of matched with the dress of the fairy. And I'm using all greens. Um, so I'm using the crushed olive, peeled paint and forest moss and I'm trying to create a gradient going from light color on the right bottom going towards the darkest green in the upper left corner. 
I'm just going back and forth between the inks to have the blend that I want to as well as the darkness that I prefer having here. Uh, my fairy has quite uh, a big shadow or there is quite a lot of dramatic uh, coloring there so I didn't want to have a really pale background. So for the sentiment there are some cute sentiments in this set uh, that I could have used but for this design I just wanted to have a tiny sentiment so I decided on high uh, and therefore I'm using the BT Banner alphabet by my favorite things and I have cut it out of some white cardstock as well as this amazing gold dust glitter card by Tonic Studios and I'm just adding that on top of each other. And once that's done, I just can embellish this card a bit more. So removing the excess glue. And then I decided upon adding a few itty bitty stars. These are the gold ones and it fits perfectly with the gold dust glitter card stock that I used. As well as this adorable gold fits with the green of the dress from the fairy and such. So I just used a few of these stars. Um, I took my time to get placement right as you can see here it was a bit fiddling um, but it worked out. So I'm just adding a few also one on the dress I really like that but it fits perfect so why not. Um, and then I will add a few more on the top. And then this panel is sort of done, still adding some details of course, as I said in the beginning, some glitter will be added. But first these stars. So using my liquid glue once more and then I'm placing the stars in the right position. Like this. And then I'm going to first adhere my panel onto a card base before I add any liquid details. So I'm adding that using an adhesive roller and now I'm going to add a bit of stickles. This is the stardust and I really like adding that onto the wings. Uh, but as I said in the beginning I'm also going to add it onto the dress on that border. It's a lighter green but it's going to be a lighter green with glitter. I first forgot it but then I remembered. <laughs> You see? Um, and then this card is completely finished. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and of course that you like the end result. I adore these fairies uh, from Streamside Studios. Uh, so I hope that you will check it out as well. If you have any questions you can always um, leave them down below in the comments and I will get back to you. I hope that you have a wonderful day left and I will be back soon with some new crafty inspiration. Bye!